Good afternoon and welcome. My name is John McMeekin. I am the chair of the TIP section and it is my honor today to help introduce and propose uh, the awardees for the Pursuit of Justice and the Excellence in Advancement of Animal Law Award uh, this evening. Uh, I'm delighted that you could join us today to recognize two very deserving recipients. Randy Kennard, who will receive the Pursuit of Justice Award and Dana Bray, who will receive the Excellence in the Advancement of Animal Law Award. But before we begin, I want to, I want to thank our sponsors. If, we, if it wasn't for our sponsors, we wouldn't have the ability uh, to have recognitions like this for such well-deserving people. So I want to take a moment to recognize and thank our sponsors for the support this year, this very difficult year. Our section premier sponsor is Thomson Reuters. Our section sponsors are MDD Forensic Accountants at, and Atlas Legal Research. And a thank you to our section conference sponsors, our gold sponsors, Alexander, DeBose, and Jefferson, Olivent, Hauser, Holland and Knight, Krebs, Farley, and Dry. And our bronze sponsors, Christian and Small, Freeborn and Peters. To begin with our awards presentation, 
I'm pleased to introduce Tasha Blakeney, who will present the Pursuit of Justice Award. Tasha is a partner in the law firm of Eldridge and Blackney, PC, Knoxville, Tennessee. She's engaged in criminal defense and general civil litigation, primarily in the areas of personal injury, wrongful death, medical malpractice, employment law, and business litigation. Tasha serves as the vice president of the Tennessee Bar Association, and she is the immediate past chair of the Plaintiff's Practice Standing Committee, the committee where this award originates. Tasha, I turn it over to you. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. It is my pleasure to present the Pursuit of Justice Award. The Pursuit of Justice Award, as John mentioned, um, was created in August of 2001, and the TIPS Plaintiffs Policy Task Force is charged with presenting and selecting a worthy recipient for this prestigious award. The award seeks to recognize lawyers, judges, legal educators who have excelled in procuring justice for those in need. Each year, we get many worthwhile candidates to consider. These are people who are fighting the good fight, advancing the rule of law, engaging with excellence and with professionalism and with ethics and with honor to make us all proud. This year's recipient does in fact make us all very proud. Randy Kennard of Nashville is this year's winner of the Pursuit of Justice Award. You will have a moment to uh, hear from Randy um, in, in just a moment, but I would like to tell you a few things about Randy. I have known him for many years as a friend and as a mentor. He is one of the most generous lawyers and people that you will ever meet. His kindness is genuine. And I would venture to say that at least in some part, the success that he has achieved in his practice is due to how genuine his nature truly is. If you wanted to build a lawyer from scratch, I would suggest to you that Randy would be a pretty darn good prototype to follow. He doesn't shy away from challenges, but he's also pragmatic and he's empathetic. He is a principal founding member of the firm Kennard Clayton and Beverage in Nashville, just a little bit down the road from me here in Knoxville. And he is well known across our state as a seasoned personal injury lawyer and medical malpractice practitioner. He's certified as both a civil trial specialist and as a medical malpractice specialist. He's a member of the American College of Trial Lawyers and is a past president of the Tennessee Trial Lawyers Association. He has secured record-breaking jury verdicts for injured clients throughout the course of his 40 years in practice. And I'd like to tell you about just a few of these. Early in his career, back in 1987, in fact, Randy represented a lady named Dorothy Flanoy. Now, Ms. Flanoy was injured as a result of medical error. And at that time in Tennessee, the largest jury verdict on record for any person was $1 million. In that case, the carrier offered $1 million for Ms. Flanoy, but she was paralyzed. And Randy said, no, he had run the numbers. And he said to the adjuster, I need 1.3 million to take care of her for the rest of her life. The adjuster looked at Randy and said, Mr. Kennard, there is no one in the entire state of Tennessee who's worth that. And Randy said, well, we'll see about that. The jury awarded Randy's client $6.7 million. A few years later, Randy represented another injured woman, Betty Donathan. She was 55 years old and she had suffered paralysis as a result of an operation on her leg. Randy obtained a $22 million verdict for her, which was again a record breaking verdict for a single person in the state of Tennessee at that time. At least that is until Randy came along and again smashed his own record in the state of Tennessee with a $55 million verdict for Aaron Andrews, the sports broadcaster Randy represented in Nashville in litigation against a hotel 
and her stalker. So as you can see, Randy is a remarkable and fierce advocate for his clients. He's also an incredible asset to the community. He has served on boards for nonprofits ranging from care of the environment to care for victims of child abuse. He's also chaired record-breaking efforts to raise funds for legal aid of Middle Tennessee. In fact, under his chairmanship, that organization raised nearly $1 million for the provision of pro bono legal services in and around the Nashville area. And finally, no introduction of Randy could be complete without listing his service to our nation. Randy is a graduate of West Point. He went on to serve two tours of duty in Vietnam with the 173rd Airborne Brigade. He credits that with equipping him for success in the practice of law. He was awarded the Vietnamese Cross of Gallantry, a Purple Heart, a Bronze Star of Valor, and an Air Medal for his two tours in Vietnam. He once told me that he's not afraid of trying cases and swinging for the fence because as a combat veteran, he's very aware that there are worse things than losing a trial. So for all of these reasons and so many more, it is our pleasure to present the Pursuit of Justice Award to Tennessee lawyer and my friend, Randy Kennard. Tasha, that was so nice. Thank you for those kind words. My goodness. I'm, I'm so emotional about this. <laughs> Well, don't make me cry too, Randy. <laughs> Just thank you so much. And, the, and those who made this choice, uh, thank you all. I want to show you, if you were here, Tasha, you'd be handing me this beautiful award. I don't know if you can see it, but it says the Pursuit of Justice Award. And it has a base that says, my name and presented April 28, 2021. So that's my birthday and how, how wonderful, extra wonderful it is to get this award on my birthday. And I, I, I will not celebrate my birthday again without thinking about this and the kind of things you said. I'm going to put this award in a, the most prominent place I can in my office. And uh, I'll always cherish it. Thank you. Besides whoever made this decision, uh, I'd like to thank my wife, Peggy, who has uh, always been there late nights supporting me and allowing, allowing me to pursue justice for my clients. It's a hard job uh, doing that. And I understand she's able to watch this. Thank you, Peggy. And uh, my daughter, Jessica, is also watching. Thank you, Jessica, for understanding why I had to miss some ball games. Rather than give a long speech about uh, the pursuit of justice, I'd like to share one story with you about George Brown. 39 years ago, George walked into my tiny office and he limped in because he'd lost his leg below his knee. And I said, George, uh, why are you here? And he said, uh, I have two days to file my lawsuit. Five lawyers have turned me down. And I said, well, what happened? And he said, I was in a bar in Lewisburg. Tennessee. And I got in a fight at midnight and I beat the other guy up and he went out to his car, got a sawed off shotgun and came in the bar and shot me in my leg to get even. And he put 110 pellets in my leg. They took me to the very small town hospital in a town where they had three doctors. This town was just down the road from where the KKK started. And George Brown was an African-American man. 
turned down by five of the lawyers. And I said, George, I'll take your case. And I filed it. I filed it against two doctors who looked after George in that hospital. What they did is they uh, did nothing but put him in the bed for five days. And after five days, because they didn't ever open, one was a surgeon and one was a family doc, they never opened his leg as it started to swell. After a couple of days, it started to swell and they could have made a simple incision to relieve the pressure, but they didn't do that. So the pressure continued inside his leg, cutting off his blood supply. And after five days, his room started to smell. Gangrene had set in. So the doctor said, we're going to have to ship you, George, to Vanderbilt in Nashville, where they're going to do some blood vessel work. They shipped him off. They cut off his leg immediately below the knee, non-salvageable. And we pursued the two doctors. A no offer case. As it got nearer the, the trial date, I was talking to some older lawyers in Middle Tennessee, and they said, What are you going down there for, Randy? Why are you going to that small town representing a black man? You will not win. I said, Well, I'm going to go see if we can. George and I were in the courtroom, nine o'clock. Jurors come in about 70. Every one of them was white. 12 people get in the box. I had all these notes ready. You know, I was a young lawyer about how to do four dire, how to conduct four dire. I was all ready to go. And I put them all aside and I stood up in front of the jury and said this. George Brown and I saw you all when you came in. And we saw there are no black people in here. And George leaned over and said to me, Mr. Kennard, can a black man get a fair trial in this county? I said, George, I don't know, but I'll ask the jury in just a minute. Let me see a show of hands of anybody who can't give a black man in this county a fair trial. No hands went up, and I looked at the judge and said, Your Honor, this jury is acceptable. Well, we tried this case for two days, only took two days. The judge ran, ran us fast, and at 10 o'clock at night, George won his case. You've never heard of this case. The verdict was only $50,000. George and I went out, <laughs> went out the door of that tiny courthouse and stood on the steps and we hugged each other. And then he looked up over my shoulder and he started to cry. He was looking up. I said, George, what's wrong? You just, you just won your case. And he looked up and, he's, and there was this, I looked around and there was a huge oak tree right beside the steps. He said, Mr. Kennard, they used to hang men like me in that tree. This is a great day. And it was a great day. And I, I got in my car and I think uh, the wheels never touched the ground. What a wonderful moment that was. I hope I can recall George Brown on my deathbed of all the cases I've tried. That's my favorite one. And I'd like to dedicate this award. To George Brown. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, I got emotional, but that's how much this award means to me. And I appreciate it so much. Thank you.
Randy, I think you've uh, you've silenced all of us. Your your humility, your grace, um, and the sincerity, um, I think, tells us all we need to know uh, about who you are and how deserving you are of this uh, of this award. Uh, it's it is my honor, and I think the honor of everybody on this call, to be in your presence right now. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, I'm going to take a deep breath here for a second. And I am going to uh, introduce you all to A.J. Albrecht. Uh, A.J. Albrecht will present the Excellence in the Advancement of Animal Law Award uh, to Dana Bray. A.J. is currently the chair of TIPS Animal Law Committee uh, and director of Government Affairs uh, at Mercy for Animals. But before I, I turn it over to A.J., I ask Dana's permission to brag on her a bit. Uh, and, and Dana and I have come to know each other over the past several years, uh, and she has uh, volunteered on the side to help me in a couple other projects uh, and presented for me uh, at a uh, presentation uh, at Southern University Law Center. And uh, to say that I was, I was uh, overwhelmed by um, how good a, a presentation she gave, but also how she related to the students um, in, a, in a practical and pragmatic and honest way. Uh, and uh, to see a, a seasoned person as, as accomplished as Dana um, giving such sage advice uh, to law students, I was really proud of Dana. Um, so I told her I'd brag on her uh, and thank her in public for all of her work. Uh, so thank you, Dana. Uh, AJ, let me turn it over to you and you can brag on her a bit more. I am so honored to. Thank you very much, John. And Randy, congratulations. And thank you for sharing those very moving remarks. Um, I too was feeling a bit emotional. And be sure you check the chat because I think others have shared similar remarks. Good afternoon, everyone. And thank you so much for being here. I'm absolutely humbled to be presenting this year's Excellence in the Advancement of Animal Law Award to my colleague, mentor, role model, and dear friend, Dana Bray. This award recognizes exceptional work by an animal law committee member who through commitment and leadership has advanced the humane treatment of animals through the law. If you have had the pleasure of working with Dana in any capacity throughout her career, you already know that she is beyond deserving of this honor. Quite often, Dana is asked to participate in panels like John just described, or give presentations to young lawyers or law students about what it's like to be an animal law practitioner. Despite her demanding job as General Counsel of Mercy for Animals, we're a global organization and the largest focused on farmed animals, Dana always seems to find time to participate in these opportunities. During a recent panel, she was asked to share a bit about her career and how it started and what drew her to animal law. And Dana shared the most beautiful story of how one day when she was still in private practice and feeling a bit burnt out, she found herself sitting on the floor of her home with a sick dog she was caring for, gazing into that animal's eyes and feeling an overwhelming feeling of calling and purpose. It wasn't too long after this that Dana left private practice and followed her dreams and landed her first animal law position, which was with the International Fund for Animal Welfare. When I heard Dana share that poignant story with a group of aspiring animal lawyers, I was both moved and inspired. But in reflecting on it while preparing these remarks for today, I realized something else pretty extraordinary. Dana holds degrees from some of the most selective academic institutions in the world. She began her legal career as an associate with some of the most prestigious law firms. She's a Fulbright scholar and a Moorhead scholar, incredibly well-traveled, she speaks multiple languages. She's a past and present chair of numerous animal law committees, a frequent speaker at professional seminars, and she speaks on complex topics that I don't understand, like antitrust laws and how they might impact various different types of animals. I also recently learned that she's made a hobby out of taking and passing bar exams in various states. But despite all of these impressive accomplishments and accolades, when asked about her career, Dana does not name drop or even humble brag. Instead, she tells her story as beginning with a love for animals. 
And this commitment shines through in her work as well as her volunteer service, which ranges not just from her leadership in ABA and tips, but also to transporting homeless dogs to their second chances. Dana leads by example and has inspired countless lawyers and law students, including myself, to join this robust and growing area of the law, an area of the law that has been made more sophisticated simply by Dana being a part of it. Dana balances humility and empathy with grit and tenacity. These are all things that make her an exceptional animal lawyer. Throughout her career, she's built out and led legal teams who shield large nonprofit organizations from significant risk, sued federal agencies for their mistreatment of some of the most vulnerable creatures on the planet, and defended multiple animal law focused resolutions before the ABA's House of Delegates, at least one of them, which has since gone on to be codified as federal law. I would also be remiss if I didn't highlight that Dana proved herself to be the strongest muck raker in the tips section during the 2019 public service event at Lalani Farm Sanctuary in Maui. So much so, in fact, that a very pernicious goat named Nancy became enraged with what a thorough job Dana was doing, scooping out her huts that she began chasing and headbutting Dana around the farm. Sharing just a few minutes of Dana's accomplishments is no easy feat, and I know that I am far from the only one who wishes to congratulate Dana on this well-deserved award. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Danielle, who's going to share a brief slideshow of additional remarks.
So Dana, that slideshow was put together by the legendary multi-talented Joan Schaffner, and it's just an excerpt. Um, if you could please uh, hold up first. This is what presenting an award in 2021 looks like. I'm now presenting you with <laughs> the Excellence in Animal Law. Um, congratulations. You should have received a second package. You wanted to open that box up. That is um, a scrapbook, which includes all of the congratulations that Joan was able to gather. It looks beautiful. There are 140 messages from colleagues, friends, and people in there. It definitely does not beat a networking reception where there would be wine and vegan cheese, but um, we're all so proud of you. Thank you for all that you've done throughout your career to advance the protection of animals under the law. And I'm certain you have so much more to accomplish. Congratulations. Thank you so much, AJ. And thank you, Joan, and everyone uh, who is featured in that presentation. It's really incredible and overwhelming. And I'm with you, Randy. I'm quite emotional. Um, it's also an honor um, to follow you, Randy, and to hear your remarks. So thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, thank you, John, for your kind words. Um, it is so, I, I'm overwhelmed. I, I really love being together in person. Uh, but the upside is that I am seeing in the chat box and in the attendee list that I have extended family here. I have friends and colleagues from all parts of my life, um, from Mercy for Animals and the International Fund for Animal Welfare, and from Freshfields and from White and Case and from the Tennessee Bar Association. And I'm just, I, I'm so, I'm so moved. Um, thank you all so much for being here. Um, I want to uh, start by just saying, mentioning some of the people who have made my involvement in the American Bar Association and TIPS and the Animal Law Committee so rewarding. Starting with the TIPS staff, you are so incredible. Thank you for everything you do. Um, Danielle, thank you for your incredible work on this reception. Teresa L, Janet, Norma, Chris, Jean, Teresa B, Brianna, and Julie, you are all wonderful. Um, I have to share my favorite memory of Teresa Livingston because it relates to an award reception. We were preparing to give Joan Schaffner the Hecker Award on Maui um, and 10 minutes before go time, I you know, went to Teresa and I said, where's the award? And Teresa, for the first and only time, I heard Teresa curse and it was very endearing because the award was in her hotel room, which was quite some distance away. Uh, but someone ran and got it and it went off smoothly. And I'll always remember Teresa for that award moment. And special thank you to Chris Stewart for letting me be a social media super fan of your wonderful rescued pit bull Zoe who made it into the slideshow, which is just really meaningful. So thank you all for making tips what it is. And John, thank you also for bringing your immense love of dogs to tips, which is so wonderful. Um, and thank you for keeping this section thriving in such a challenging time. We are so, we're so fortunate to have your leadership. So thank you, John. Um, I want to recognize the TIPS uh, delegates who have worked so tirelessly to support the Animal Law Committee in our work. Um, this to me is the most exciting and meaningful part of the work of the Animal Law Committee, although we do so many wonderful things, you got a sense from the pictures. Um, but the end result is when we get uh, the ABA House of Delegates to pass a policy resolution, the ABA takes a position um, for example, past resolutions have been against dog breed discrimination or against private ownership of exotic animals or in favor of police training for dog encounters to reduce shootings. And when the ABA takes these positions, those policy decisions can then be used by animal advocates to make real change in the world. And our incredible current delegates, Bob Peck, Kay Hodge, and Holly Paul Glaze, have been so amazing, such champions for tips and champions for animals. Um, in the past, I've had the pleasure to also work with Jim Carr and with Mike Drumkey. And thank you so much. Um, because of tips place in the ABA and because of your skill in navigating the House of Delegates, we've been able to do so much good for animals. So thank you all. And I have so many other friends and leaders in tips. I don't wanna name everyone because I will inevitably forget someone, um, but this is a family. And if you needed any more proof uh, that this is a family, uh, we have even had a wedding at a TIPS meeting. You know who you are. Uh, I cannot wait until we are all back together again in person. I hope it will be soon. Um, the theme of all of that is the incredible support that the TIPS section has shown for the Animal Law Committee since the Animal Law Committee 
was founded in 2004. Um, and within the Animal Law Committee, uh, there's so many wonderful, wonderful colleagues. I'm so honored to be recognized by you. Uh, AJ, you are amazing. You're knocking it out of the park this year as the chair of the Animal Law Committee. And you're such an inspiring and tireless champion for animals and also a lot of fun. So thank you. Thanks to Barbara Gislason for founding our committee. We are all standing on your shoulders and would not be here without you. Thank you, thank you Barbara. Yolanda Eisenstein, uh, thank you. You gave me my first project for the committee and roped me in. Um, Rebecca Huss, uh, you asked, invited me to be the chair of the committee. I always will remember your faint praise. I think you said, well, at least we'll, we know you'll keep the trains running on time. And I was so honored to be asked and I loved it. Um, Jim Gaswaldi for being such a compassionate and diplomatic teacher to all of us all the time. I've never met anyone um, so consistently constructive as you are, Jim. Um, to Lady Van Cabbage, who shows us the art of never giving up and how much can be accomplished. Chris Green um, for welcoming me to my first Animal Law Committee meeting and never stopping since then to share encouragement uh, and expertise and kindness. And last but not least to Joan Schaffner, who Joan does more than the rest of us combined. That is not an exaggeration to keep this committee moving. So thank you, Joan. And to so many others on the committee, I am proud to call you my friends and colleagues. Um, I'm just so moved that so many of my loved ones and friends and colleagues are here today. My parents and my sister and my brother-in-law and my nephew Malcolm are here. Hello, Malcolm. Um, thank you for supporting me in everything and supporting me in pursuing my dreams. And to my husband, Mitch, who is also here, I consider Mitch to be an honorary animal lawyer. Um, I base that on the number of special needs animals that we have hosted in our home, um, and also the number of crazy animal related activities that I have roped him in on, animal rescues, animal themed trips. Uh, Mitch has been there for all of it. Thank you for being my partner in everything, Mitch, and for supporting me and pursuing this path that while it may not maximize my income, it certainly does fill my heart. Thank you. Um, I was a little kid who couldn't stand it uh, when the smaller kid or the different kid was picked on on the playground or when an animal was abused in my classroom. And what I have found through this community, through the ABA and through TIPS and the Animal Law Committee is a career that is true to my spirit and I'm so grateful for it. Um, no one does anything alone, of course, and I had never heard of animal law until I saw an announcement for an ABA TIPS Animal Law Committee meeting in New Orleans in 2012. And I thought, animal law, that's an option that exists? I had no idea. Um, and I went to the meeting and that's how I got on this path. And that's how I got my current job, you know, through a, a referral and connections through colleagues, through the committee. And we all do this together. Um, I went vegetarian when I was 14 because my bold and brave little sister went vegetarian at 13. And then my incredibly compassionate mother started cooking vegetarian for us and never stopped. And I went vegan at 40 after being around all of the wonderful vegans on the TIPS Animal Law Committee and thinking, look at these compassionate and rational people. Of course I should do that. Why, shouldn't, why didn't I do that before? Um, it can be hard to be a lawyer. We all know that. It can be challenging. It can be stressful. You carry the burdens of your clients on your back. And it can be hard to be an animal activist. You have to look at the face of the world as it is and not despair. You have to have hope. And I do have hope. Um, I have hope that things are moving in the right direction. And to me, the growth of the animal law field is one of the proofs that things are moving in the right direction. From these communities, the ABA community, the larger legal community, the TIPS family, the animal lawyers from my family and friends, I take my energies to fight my corner, my small corner in the fight against injustice. And there is so much good legal work to do there is no shortage of good causes. Thank you all for helping me to find mine. Thank you for honoring me today. Thank you. Dana, it has been, uh, it has been our honor uh, to have you involved with TIPS. And you are 
one of a, a long line of, of people uh, who have served the Animal Law Committee uh, and um, really done an exceptional job both in the practice area, but bringing distinction to tips. Um, so I join in, in AJ and everyone else's congratulations. You are a very worthy recipient of this award. Thank you very much. Well, that concludes the uh, awards presentations. Everybody, thank you very much for joining us to celebrate uh, Randy Kennard and Dana Bray and all of their accomplishments. Please join us tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Central, where we will hear from a panel of judges on has the COVID pandemic changed the courtroom forever? Everybody have a good evening. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Thank you very much.